Good morning. We're on the Coach's Corner podcast, and we have in the middle Farrell Middleton, who is a coach. And on my right, Jim Raps, who is a friend, uh, a commercial connector. I could give a couple of other adjectives, but I'm going to stop there because we have 20, 25 minutes to really deliver value for you. And this morning, we're going to talk before I, we're going to talk about being an A performer having healthy relationships, and being a problem solver. And what does that mean to leveling up your business and your life? So, Farrell, just for people that may be the first time, introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, and who you serve. All right. Uh, good morning. And uh, again, uh, thanks for having me again, uh, Pete. I, I love coming on with you. Uh, again, my name is Farrell Middleton and the name of my company is called The Bell Curve of Life. And I am in the teaching, coaching, mentoring, and speaking business. And my desire uh, at the business level is to work with business owners and leaders to help them create smart and healthy work environments that uh, address their issues and solve their problems. And we focus on um, customer service, uh, internal uh, and external, which is a big deal, enhanced productivity and employee engagement and retention, uh, trying to strengthen that. So that, that's it in, a, uh, in about 60 seconds. That's what I want to do. Awesome. That's a 60 second elevator. OK, I've been Jim. working on that. Been working yeah. on it. Jim, tell our tell our viewers who you are, what you do, and who you serve. All right, and it looks like I might have a bad connection here, guys. But uh, okay. it's uh, right. Jim we'll Raps, Rid Ridley Commercial Clean, Ridley Commercial Cleaning. We clean the commercial space, uh, primarily in the Atlanta area, but all over the state, and we will go pretty much anywhere. We're in some other states as well. So uh, that's what we do, and uh, it's pretty simple. We clean commercial. Uh, mostly offices, but uh, we do some industrial and things like that as well. Awesome. I love it. There's more I like about it that I'd like to share, but we're going to get into leveling up your business and why it's so important to know these three concepts to be able to level up. So we're going to talk first. Well, Farrell's going to talk to you. Well, Jim and I will comment on it, but Farrell, tell us, I know these three things are what we're covering. What does it mean to be an A performer? Okay. Uh, and this relates to our historical educational grading scale, A, B, C, D, and F. And being an A performer, uh, in my opinion, is, let's just say it's probably the, the best way to try to go through life, uh, personally and professionally. And I've identified some traits for uh, A performers. And basically, it starts with uh, your frame of mind when you pull your head up off your pillow every day. Uh, that's it. It starts there. And then uh, it, uh, you know, maybe some higher level stuff. It uh, relates to having a positive attitude on a routine basis. And again, I know we're going to touch on this, but uh, being a problem solver, being approachable, communicating well, uh, having an open mind. Those are just kind of a few things that, that, that come to mind. So if you want to uh, maybe dissect that a little bit, ask me a specific question mm -hmm. or two. Uh, you guys have at it, but I got a lot of material. I can talk for a long time, but y'all, why don't y'all jump in? Well, you know what? I thought you just described Jim Raps with that. So, Jim, and obviously when we see it through our own eyes, we see it differently than what other people see. So if I look at you, I look at a person that always delivers value, communicates well, that, you know, you take the day for what it is and you give it all each day. So what does it mean for you when you hear the word a performer? What, what do you try to do in your business to achieve that term? Well, I'm not much for Latin, but being Catholic, everybody knows carpe diem, right? So I, I do believe in seizing the day. It's all you have. Um, look, we all have, <clears throat> we all have things that get in the way. We have things that happen to us. We have bad days. We're all going to have them. Um, it's hard sometimes, but for the most part, I, I love Farrell's analysis with that and, and thinking on it, um, starting the day on the right foot. And I learned a long time ago that you can easily start the day on the wrong foot. You can get up, get some bad news, or even stubbing your toe can lead to a bad day because you start, you know, you start thinking poorly and usually always it will turn out to be a bad day. Um, I get my bad days as well, but uh, I like 
Farrell's look at it, and and I heard him speak at the Marietta Business Association. What was that? A week or two ago, Farrell? Uh, two um, weeks ago, yeah, two weeks ago. Two yeah. weeks ago, he did he did a thirty minute presentation, and the light bulb went off in my head. And Farrell is now going to be working with one of our new managers to try to make him an A performer because I believe he can do that. Mm. Yeah, I love that. What 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 you know? You mentioned something, Farrell, about after your head gets up from the pillow, do you like what's your morning to prepare yourself? What's that morning like for you or your clients? What do you try to get them to do to be that a performer? Uh, basically it, uh, you know, like I said, it starts when you do that, but as Jim said, uh, very well, you're going to have some challenges and basically the best thing you can do is just try to approach each of the issues with, uh, you know, that positive attitude. I, I, my program is filled with uh, references to having a positive attitude on a routine basis. Okay. And again, you're going to have good days and bad and, you know, stuff's going to come your way out of left field and it's going to get you off center for a little while. Uh, yeah, that kind of deal. But I believe that if people can stay focused on, you know, what is the, uh, the uh, objective of the exercise, we'll call it that, then generally uh, the results can be, can be positive. And so when I do engage with my clients, whether it's either at the owner level or at the middle level manager or what I'll call the associate level, uh, the, um, the, the frame of reference is still the same. Whatever your responsibilities are that you have to do on a daily, weekly, routine basis is what you want to try to focus on to uh, you know perform well. And this not only is about you, but it's about everyone else that you interact with. And right. if you can be, uh, you know, I, I believe that attitude uh, is contagious either positive or negative. And we've all been around uh, all of those and everything in between. And so if you can be um, whatever your attitude is, it's going um, to affect the people around you as well. So not only is this about you, but it's about the others you associate with routinely. Big deal. Big, Very big true. deal. Here. Well, if I didn't know any better, you, you provided a bridge into our second that we want to cover with our viewers today is healthy relationships. So when I think of your B&I, 75 plus people, building relationships, and I've known Jim for, I don't know how many years, but a lot of years. And the one thing, if you had to say, what do you, what do you say about Jim Raps? He has healthy relationships. And uh, we, we actually coined it the commercial connector. It has a little bit to do with it, but what does it mean when you when you're talking to your clients, and I'll go to Farrell first. What does it mean to help them understand healthy relationships? Okay, uh, basically, uh, and, and in my program, I've got material that relates to family relationships. I had some challenges in my family. Won't get into that at this point. Then getting into personal relationships with your friends and friend groups, and you know, ladies and men, all that kind of stuff. And then getting into professional relationships. And I've got a few tips on such relationships. Number one, if you are sincere and trustworthy on a routine basis, people will want to work with you. And we'll mm -hmm. say that again because it is so important. If you are sincere and trustworthy on a routine basis, people will want to work with you. And my one main tip for, and, and all my material has tips about how you can you know do things better, live a better life, all that. My main tip for maintaining healthy professional relationships is it's really, really complicated. So whoever's listening, I want you to sit down and pull out a pen and a, and a big, big piece of paper because it's a lot. All right, here we go. Return every phone call, text or email in an appropriate time frame. Mm -hmm. And you will become a trusted source of being a business associate. It's really that simple. So that's my, that's my big, big thought right there. So. Awesome. And he hit the nail. He hit the nail on the head, right? There. Yeah, I was going to say, you know what? He bridged it to you, Jim, because our conversations have always been about that lost art of customer service and how people tend to not want to communicate like they did. So, what does it mean to you, Jim? Like, what 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 just Farrell just said about that healthy building of trust and relationships? by communicating, what what would you say to our viewers? Man, I could talk about this all day long. Um, I don't know if it's a lost art. It seems to be in the 
younger generation, maybe, I don't know, not everybody, that's for sure. Um, but I believe in exactly what Farrell said. If, if a client, <coughs> excuse me here, a client or a potential client, anybody calls your business line or your cell phone for business, it is your obligation, your duty to call them back promptly. And, and I do it all the time. And if I find out that any of our upper management is not, we have a real problem. Um, whether it's a hit to the website, it's a, um, you know, the, the filling out the form on the website or a text or a call or an email, whatever it is, calling them back quickly. Um, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't put it the way I wouldn't, I would never put it the way Farrell put it, but he's right. I never did it to build a healthy relationship. I never did it to, for any other reason, that's just, just the way it's supposed to be done. It's the way it used to be done. Right. I think we all grew up with that. That's just normal business. I am doing hopefully business with somebody right now with somebody that you all might know uh, you guys. And they were supposed to come to my home on Friday to do a repair. It was a 10 AM to 2 PM window at about 10 to one. I got a phone call that they couldn't come. Now we made arrangements to be here all day. My wife had to go out during the, mo the morning on Friday. She had to take my vehicle. I stayed home with her vehicle because it, it was just a big thing that, that, that had to be done to make this happen. Then he apologized and said, I'll be there Monday afternoon. And I said, what time? He said, I'll text you. It is 9, 11 a.m. here, Eastern time. And I haven't gotten a text yet. Yeah. So mm -hmm. see, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. is he going to show up? Maybe. But we shouldn't have to deal with a maybe. We should yeah. know. So if I tell somebody, okay, I've got a 1030. Press. Yeah, I got a 1030 sales call in Marietta off Johnson Ferry Road. I will be there. I will be there. I'll be there 15 minutes early. Farrell was coming to my office a week or so ago for an appointment. He was about 10 or 15 minutes early. That's how it's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is it's, you know, common sense is not always common practice. And we're older than most of our people in business. So we kind of have that perspective of life of how to be successful. You have to build trust. You have to do what you say and you have to be there when you say you're going to be there. And that's like, OK, OK, so we're, I could do the well, same thing, Jim. And so. I yeah, want to go on to, I, do you have anything else to say, Farrell? Yeah, I did. I, just one other thing on this. That was, mm -hmm. um, a, uh, was point number one. My second tip for people, and this is hugely important, and I learned this over the years, is immediately assume responsibility <laughs> for your actions or the actions of others that you are responsible for. I was a home builder for 36 years. Stuff went wrong every day. Stuff will go wrong in anybody's business every day, every other day, whatever it may be, but if you can step up to the plate, however uncomfortable it may be, and assume responsibility for your actions, it will, generally speaking, immediately turn the, the tone of the conversation down to a simmer level and the problem can get resolved. Yeah. It's, a, it's another big deal. And, and I was guilty of that. Uh, and I think a lot of people are. I think everybody, once they think about this, everybody understands the concept. And, you know, just to add to that, I, I've heard like a person will be, two hours late and they'll go, I got stuck in traffic. I said, how long have you lived in Atlanta? <laughs> yeah. It's like it, yeah. traffic didn't happen yesterday. Mm -hmm. You, you got to allow for those things because all excuses are the same. We can come up with crazy excuses. I mean, like, Hey, this, Hey, the bird flew into my window and it slowed me down. Whatever mm -hmm. it is, every, I, I laugh at excuses because people are very creative in how they, put that excuse, but you got to own it. Just what you said, you got to own it. You know, it's your responsibility to do whatever you have to do to do what you say and be there when you say you're going to be there. Okay. So let's go to problem solving. So Farrell, talk to us about how you frame your problem solving skill with your, with your clients. Okay. Basically what I do, this is a really good topic in my program. And the topic of this title, uh, or the title of this topic is called, what else can I help you with? And the premise is that when someone engages in a conversation in the office about a particular topic, 
when the that issue has been resolved, quote unquote, for the time being, the next question needs to be, what else can I help you with? And it needs to be sincere. And this is with your coworkers on, let's call it your same level of responsibility or with your superiors, say your manager or the VP or the division president, you know, whatever it is. Uh, and then another big one that we have here is what I call close external partners, which are the businesses that support your business on a routine basis. Everybody has them. Uh, some pay attention with me in home building was mainly the suppliers and subcontractors. Everybody gets that, you know, the framers and cabinet guys and landscapers, that kind of thing. But there are other ones as well. And so uh, basically they're a big part of it. So you want to help them. And then finally, when you are talking with a customer, once the issue of the moment has been properly discussed, then say, as we close, what else can I help you with? This is an extraordinary way to uh, elevate your levels of customer service. So that's my lead in. Dang, Jim, on that back, because I see you as a problem solver, because we had gotten into discussion about, you know, a particular place they might have missed a trash can. Okay, so, I mean, nobody's perfect out there. When when something happens with an account, how do you exercise that muscle of problem solving? What would you can you share with our viewers that that would be helpful for them to understand that point? Uh, first of all, to Farrell's point, um, I don't care what business you're in. Something's going to go wrong. Um, and I think that for those of us who have worked so hard to build our businesses, sometimes we can. It's natural to get a little defensive at times or defend yourself or other people like your employees, your contractors, whatever. So owning it, like Farrell said, is really, really important. There's no excuses and nobody wants to hear it. Like, I'm sorry. We had a new account. We can have two weeks ago, we started it local in Kennesaw. And what we'll do every time after we start the account is I usually do this. I'll send out an email to our contact and I'll say, Hey, how did, how did things go? And I asked the young lady who were, who was our contact, how it went. She said, everything was wonderful, except the kitchen sink. It just didn't look clean. Okay. So what we did is we were having our meeting that day. I said to Nate, who you guys know, our operations manager, I said, Nate, I need you to go over there and see if you can clean the sink. Well, they, they were, they were surprised that he walked over, he went over there in the middle of the day and started working on that sink. Turns out there's some things that you can't clean on it. And it's just what you do, right? So you solve the, if you, if you get defensive and you don't own it, you can't begin to solve the problem until you do that, I think. And we all solve problems every day. Now, Farrell, hopefully you're solving less problems now than you did in the building business. That's for sure. Oh, but absolutely. The, oh, yeah. In the janitorial world, you're doing it on a on a fairly regular basis. Uh, and that's that's also what our, our, our customers are paying us to do. They expect us to do it. So if there's an issue, we're 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 tasked with doing it. So you can't you can't solve it unless you own it first. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, totally agree I, with that. You know, I heard a person. I don't know who said it, but they said the the degree that the the biggest the bigger problems you solve, the bigger the opportunity. But sometimes there's little problems that if they're not solved, become big problems. So if you kind of have that mindset is I always want to be solving problems for my clients. I always want to be focused on that because if I'm sure, I don't know the account, but I'm sure when Nate showed up, that's like, what? I yeah. Well, you. see, it's see, like, they, this is they, it communicates such a powerful lesson. Well, there's, there's, there's things that happen there. So first of all, they expected us to maybe be, do it better the next service. Okay, which was a week. It's a weekly service. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but by showing up, for me, my experience tells me if we didn't do that and the next week it didn't, wasn't any cleaner, they're not going to understand why it's not cleaner and it's going to be mm -hmm. a constant issue. Mm -hmm. So by going in there and talking about it and showing the customer, look, we really care and we're going to do our best, but this won't come any cleaner. Then it's like, okay, I get it. I understand. Thank you. And that won't be an issue anymore. Mm -hmm. But if we didn't do that, I promise you this next sir after this next service would have the same issue. Yeah. And actually, uh, Jim, that is an excellent example. And every, every business can have a story like that. And what I term that is, I call that the compounding effect. 
And it's basically mm-hmm. when there is a relatively minor issue or like you're in this case, a, a, a minor rational explanation solved the issue. Like you said, if you didn't do that, then the next week you went in, uh, it's going to be still the same issue. And then what are they going to start doing? They're going to start looking closer at everything else that you do. Mm-hmm. And you have now turned this into a, you know, somewhat of a routine, yep. you know, more than necessary inspection process. That's yep. the compounding effect. Just nip these little yep. things in the bud like you did and get it out of the way and move on to the next stuff and provide good service. Excellent point. Great story. Yeah, and what I, and what I like about what Farrell's doing with his this this next phase of his career, <laughs> it's something that I've thought about myself. Mm-hmm. We have learned all these things the hard way, guys, because we're a little mm-hmm. older. Yeah, we've learned these things. We know these things, but a lot of the younger people starting out, in, and I, I've mentored young people in my industry to try to help them to teach them these things that we've learned that only experience is going to teach you. Yeah, you look at, I mean, I love it for the viewers that are not familiar with Jim's business is in B&I, Amanda, since sits, let's just say sits on your left, because when I was there, she was on your left. So, and you have Melissa that's in the office. So you have the ability to mentor your daughters in the business. One's in the business, one isn't in the business. So it's kind of like, a cool thing because we don't wake up one day and have all the lessons, you know, dealt us. It, it's along the way of years and years of experience. But if somebody can't, you know, share the lessons, somebody older that has been down the road, they don't know what they don't know. So I think that's so cool to say that as a mentor, you're just, all you're doing is sharing your experiences and your experiences have lessons in. So let, let's, I want to, I want to be respectful of time because if we can't stay in that window of 20 to 25, our viewers might say, well, they talk a good game, but they don't do a good game. So I want you to each of you as we close out. So Farrell first of the three things we covered, what can you share with our, viewers the most important thing that they can take home from their time on this podcast uh i believe that it is uh fostering the healthy relationships uh that that is a fundamental key of my program and if you can everybody relates with people every day where again whether it's family friends professional associates inside and outside your organization Ooh, I love that. Yep. i'm gonna ask you on that so, but before that I don't know who it was, but they said the quality of your life is the quality of your relationships. And I was going like, wow, yeah, that is. is simple, but it's very true. So, Jim, yeah. of the three things that we covered in our information, we covered, what would be the most important thing you would want our viewers to take home with them? Well, as the father of four daughters and five grandkids, I got to say that's number one. Um, but but I think they're all very, very important. And, and I'll, to, to, to be really short here, the takeaway, because you asked what the key takeaway I would have here is that if anybody watching this has their own company or they're a manager in a company and they have some employees or managers that they think may be underperforming, uh, put Farrell's name, uh, phone number up on the screen there, Pete. Let them call Farrell. Let him come in. He'll give you a consultation. I don't think you charge for that or I a do phone not. consultation or something, nope. call this guy because he knows what he's talking about and he'll help you. Wow. I, you, you, that, that, I love that because we want our viewers to be educated, but we also want to do, I call it the call of a call of experience. People sometimes call it a call, call to uh, CTA, call to action, but we call to experience. You want to experience a person that's going to help you level up, call him. I mean, heck, you can sit there and make excuses, but call him. It's not going to even, you, you, and consult and talk through, because if you think you're going to succeed to the level you're capable without that, that perspective of somebody that has many, 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 many years of lessons he's learned, skills that he's developed, call him. I mean, your business, your best investment is an investment in yourself. 
So I want to thank you guys for being with us. But before we go, look, this is the Jim graciously um, agreed to be on when we didn't even give him a notice. <laughs> <laughs> he just showed up, didn't he? No, yeah. I sent him an email and I was like, I just thought of it this morning. I said, dang, it would be good to have Jim on there before he gets into his day. So I just threw it out there. But look, if, you, if you're a building in the Kennesaw and surrounding areas and you're not happy with your cleaning and you want somebody that practices what we've talked about, that's going to talk to you, that's going to call you back, is a family business and that believes in the 45 plus years that he has learned to be where he is in his business called Jim raps. It's called. I'd like to add one Ridley, thing, please. Ridley. Uh, what's yeah. the saying, Jim? Yeah. Hold on. You don't hold on. know Diddley until you know Ridley. See, see, you were going to screw it up and I knew it. So I tried to stop you, but you, you couldn't be stopped. You yeah, just could not we go. be stopped. So, so I wanted to say first, it's not, I say to people, it's not just if you're not happy with your cleaning service. Every business at some point won't be happy with the cleaning service. Usually it's going to happen. Call me up. I'll come in. It doesn't cost you anything. I'll tour your facility. I'll give you a no obligation proposal. You'll have it there in your files. And if you ever need me down the road, fine. My top account I have right now, I met them a full year before they ever called me back. Mm -hmm. They decided to stay with the incumbent. And then they called me and said, hey, we need to talk. And they're our top client right now. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. So it's not just if they need a service. But as the slogan goes, you don't know Diddley till you call Ridley. I love it. Please share this uh, as we close. Please share this with people you know. You need somebody that needs coaching. You need somebody that needs the building cared for with the care that a family business will care for it. Call Jim. So share this with them. All you have to do is hit the share button and give it to a friend that doesn't know that this is available. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys being on. And, Thank you, guys. Uh, go, go tackle a day and make a difference. There we go. Love it. Carpe diem. See you guys soon.